Okay, so I did my presentation over <coughs> lymphoma. And then this is Rocky. He's my dog. Um, he actually has canine lymphoma right now, which is why I'm doing this presentation. It's also just a good excuse mm -hmm. to actually put a picture of my dog mm -hmm. right here. Beautiful. So, there you go. So what is it? Lymphomas are actually a group of cancers. There's over 30 different types. Um, they're derived from the lymphocytes, or as you guys know, white blood cells. And because of that, you're going to find them first in the lymph nodes, followed by the spleen and the bone marrow. It can go beyond that, but it will start with the um, <coughs> immune organs. And then it represents about 7 to 14 percent of cancer cases in dogs, so it is one of the most common. And then it's very similar to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in humans. Um, there's very little microscopic difference. And because there is so little difference, Purdue is actually doing um, clinical trials right now between the vet school and the oncology department, trying to find a cure for both non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and canine lymphoma. So, and then some signs and symptoms. The first one you're going to see is enlarged lymph nodes. And if you look at the picture, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, those are the lymph nodes you're actually going to feel if you're petting your dog. Um, if it's a short-haired dog, those are the ones where you're actually going to see the swelling most often. Then some other common symptoms would be um, rapid weight loss, um, lethargy, um, low appetite, so you know, it goes with the weight loss. And then it could also have edema or swelling in certain places. And then one website thought that uh, boxers, bull mastiffs, basset hounds, St. Bernard's, Scottish Terriers, Airedales, and Bulldogs might have a higher chance of getting a lymphoma. Um, Rocky is a Beagle Border Collie Cross, so he is not one of those breeds, so there is no really scientific evidence for it, it's just what they thought. Um, the common age is between six and nine. Um, Rocky is nine, so he's kind of a median little statistic dog, he fits right in there. And then the only way to know for sure is to actually do a biopsy of it. And so with Rocky, he actually got it under his chin first. Um, I don't think you can really see it in this picture, but it started as two little lumps. and. Um, we couldn't see him because he's got so much hair. So I was petting him one day and I felt him and I was like, mm, it's a little weird. I didn't think much about it. A couple weeks later, it was actually a big mass under his neck. So then I was like, eh, maybe this is a, um, an abscess or something. He didn't have a fever. He was eating just fine. Um, he seemed healthy. Then a couple weeks after that, it was actually big enough. It was pushing on his windpipe. And the poor little thing sounded like Darth Vader. So that's when we decided to take him to the um, So it was event. growing quite rapidly then. Yeah. Um, I think I first, I think I was home the first part of May, and that's when the little bumps, and then late, or late May, early June was when he actually had it. That's mm -hmm. when we found out he had it. So, <coughs> and then for treatment, the first thing they're going to do is something called a staging test. So they're going to do um, like blood tests, urine tests. Um, x-rays just to see how far the cancer has spread and how rapid it's growing. Um, chemotherapy is the most common treatment. Um, unlike humans, dogs handle it very well. Only about 5% of them actually need to be in the hospital or in the vet clinic for treatments. And then one thing with chemo, um, it puts the lymphoma into remission. You can't actually treat a lymphoma. So treated dogs um, in remission usually last between 9 and 13 months. Obviously, some are going to live longer than that. Some won't quite make it that long. It just depends on the cancer. <laughs> and then the last option would be steroids, which would just manage the symptoms. So it helps with the swelling, it helps with their appetite, and it just keeps them comfortable for the rest of so their So treatment buys you time, it sounds like. It doesn't yeah. cure. Okay. Yeah, just time. Yep. So, questions? Um, so for your dog, since it was kind of localized, did they just do a biopsy of the mass, or do they also do like a bone marrow biopsy to see if it like mass size and like? Uh, do you remember? As far I actually wasn't there, but okay. as far as I know, um, my mom's not a vet, so and she's not like she hasn't had any animals. My mom's either, either, so yeah. No. Yeah, I think they just took um, a biopsy. It was probably under his chin. I think the vet found mass. another okay. one under his leg, but he did it under the chin. And so, what treatment did he get? Rocky is on steroids. Oh, he's on um, steroids. We can't okay. afford chemotherapy. Yeah, and well, and then he's nine years old. Yeah, and he's so nine. He just, he's an old, yeah. Maybe if he had a younger dog, maybe the chemotherapy <coughs> would buy more time. But yeah. yeah, it's all these tough decisions. Do you guys do it here, or do you go just to your local vet? It was a local vet. Local vet. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. Other questions, comments? Yes. Oh, here we go. I volunteered in the oncology department here my freshman year, mm -hmm. and they had a lot of lymphoma cases, mm -hmm. especially in dogs, lots of carriers. Yeah. And we would do chemo and biopsies mm -hmm. and lymphoma cases. And, and they're probably lot. they're probably being referred by other vets. But, yeah. They, they have to be referred. Yeah. If you Google canine lymphoma, Purdue's vet page is the first okay. thing that pops up. <laughs> <laughs> we can give you payment options if you guys want to go to Purdue. Yeah.